Okay, how's the sound? Can anybody hear me? This is gonna be a fun one if I don't mess up too much. So I'll start in a second. I'm just, uh, I made the mistake of trying to uh, modify the printer physically. So I'm trying to undo my great idea. Hopefully I can start this up and not make too much of a mess. But we'll give it a second more. See if we got here. 58 seconds. Now the camera might blink out depending upon how it's functioning. Um, it's got a timer on it. I set it to unlimited, but it likes to turn off after a half an hour. So we're just gonna start. I'll put up the chat and uh, how's it going? I'm about to do uh, the SKR2 on the uh, Ender 3 Pro, if I can get it all back together real quick. Obviously, I don't have a lot of uh, real estate to work with. This is basically uh, in my kitchen. So let me put this back on. This might take a second, because I'm doing it in a spot where I can't see. Oh, it went right on. Okay, so let me uh, move this down a little. There we go. Let me see if the camera's still working. Okay, so down in here, we have the other configuration I did a while ago. That's probably too bright. Let's just put that back for now. So essentially I'm gonna pop out this box down below and I'm gonna try and give you a good camera angle without getting everything in the way. Let me uh, focus this real quick. So down here we're gonna have to extract this. This is uh, one of my uh, old inventions there's probably a better way to do it but essentially everything's in the box right here so I'm gonna start disconnecting things now the weird ones gonna be the z-axis because of the way they wired it so if you look over on these which you can't see where my finger is but let's see if I can make this better over here there's markings on it for what they are for voltage, ground, and signal. So we'll try and zoom in with the second camera. I just gotta find it, because I moved it. Here it is. So let me bring up a second camera so you can see if it'll reach. So I'm gonna activate one, hopefully. Let me see if I can add it real quick here. 
Let's see, camera input. If you wanna put questions in the chat, I'll try and answer them. This might get weird for a second while I add the second camera. Okay, there's the second camera. So over in here, which is kind of hard to see, is where you're going to see voltage, ground, and signal. I'm trying to find a better angle so you can see it better. But it's written right in here. So we might be able to examine it off another printer if this doesn't focus. But let me see if I can attach this someplace or at least show you what's going on inside the board. So down in here, I have a board that I set up. This is originally the SKR. So we're gonna have to extract this board out and then see what we can do. So let me move the chat over where I can see it. There we go. So essentially what we're gonna do is get this out real quick. It's gonna take me a second to unscrew it. So I'm gonna put this down and try and find an angle where I can point this where you can actually see what I'm doing. I might be able to get it under the belt. There we go. So down in here, I have to undo these bolts that I have that hold it in place. They might just slide right out, which they will. So I'm just gonna start popping out wires and they're all marked with lettering on them to say what they are. So let me uh, see if I can get one so you can see it. So there is a letter on that that tells us what it is. So I'm gonna have to pop out a couple of things just to get this to slide out. And then we'll do everything from above so you can see. Plus, uh, I'm not sure how well this is wired anymore, so let me uh, show you what I'm doing. I'm trying to pop these out one at a time. Okay, there's a fan down in here that I gotta pop out. Now I'm not sure how well this is gonna go because it's been a long time since I've done this. But as you can see down in here, I'm gonna have to undo these because I have ferro connectors on them. And I know it's kind of blurry. So I'll take a screwdriver and essentially loosen each one of these while trying to hold the camera so you can see what I'm doing. Unfortunately, what I'm working with is a webcam for the second camera, so it's very poor quality. And then we had to figure out the wiring again. And I'll show you some tricks to do that. But essentially, there's some things about the wires that make it simple. Wow, I got this really tightened in here. So we're going to start with simple steppers and get these out. So essentially, Here's the board. So let me bring it up above so you can see better. So that's the current SKR 1.4. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna actually take this out. So it might take a second because I'm not sure of my sizing here. And the actual connection should be similar to the version that I used for the SKR4 or 1.4. So 
So I think there's a couple more over here. And then there might be one right here. Now I built a fan into the case to cool. It's right next to where the screwdriver is right here. So let's just lift this out. And as you can see, I had to put something special in here so I could connect it. Now the USB, we're gonna have to actually hot swap in. So I'm gonna do something different from what I normally do with the SKR2. I'm gonna leave it on direct power after we get things set up, but we'll test a couple things without it on direct power. So we've gotta check the jumper. Right now it's set to USB, so we'll leave it there. I gotta get a USB drive for it, but we'll do this for the connection. And then let me grab the bolts that are in here. Okay. So essentially, it just drops in here. And we can do that real quick. But I want to set this up with steppers before I actually do that. So which steppers are we going to use? I'm probably going to use, because it has end stops already, the TMC 2208s. So essentially, it's this stepper right here. So I'm gonna take them out of the other board. And apparently something's going on on my computer that I don't know about, but hopefully you guys can still see. Let me check uh, to see if everything's going okay here. Okay, well, I don't know what that was. A lot of dust on that board. So once you got that out, we have to examine the board. It's got jumpers probably for the configuration of, looks like SPY or UART, but we can check that. So I'm gonna take you over to a web page in just a second. I just have to make sure it's working because I set this up uh, rather quick tonight. So let me go to the Big Tree Tech website real quick for GitHub. And then let me see if I can see it on the actual desktop. Give me a second to actually change desktops. There we go. So over on the desktop, what you can see right here is we've got the Big Tree Tech website. So we'll go here and we're gonna have to search for the repositories. So I'm gonna change this to SKR space two click on that and then we're gonna go to hardware and see if we can find a manual so there's one right here and I'm gonna move something over so I don't keep tripping on it here there we go so here's the manual this is what the board looks like unmodified notice how they have the jumper on direct power which would be over here and I usually mark these for voltage and ground so I know what they are and I sometimes do these although they're becoming more and more irrelevant because this is usually where your heaters are. So this printer currently is configured to do, I think one heater and two steppers. So that's why I have five of these, but we're just gonna do the four for now. Maybe we'll do the five, we'll see what happens, but it's gonna take some calibration. So. Let's scroll down and see what we got here. We're using a 24 volt power supply, so we have to keep that in mind. It's telling us about the board. It's gonna be a bit until we can find the actual stepper mode. This is step dir, which would be like an A4988 or a DRV8825 for jumper pins. But we're interested in the UART mode. So it's just one jumper. So let's go back over to the uh, workbench here. Give me a second to transition. There we go. So now that we know where that is, we're gonna have to reach in and pop these out to get it into the right mode. 
These are jumper caps. I usually call them jumpers. It's just my shorthand. And if we were to do sensorless homing on this, this board is kind of different. I want to say unique, but I'm going to say different. There's two pins down in here that enable it for sensorless homing that you'll have to use a two millimeter jumper cap rather than the 2.54 millimeter jumper cap. So we're gonna just try and prepare all of these just in case, because I'm not sure where I'm gonna go with the actual extruder, because I have a two port extruder on this, so I might do both. But there's some stale filament in it, so I don't know how well it's gonna work out. And I'll check on the chat in just a second. I just need to finish popping these out. And there's several ways that we can configure this. The shortcut would be to use the example file. But if you know me, I'm not a big fan of example files. I like to figure things out by tripping over them. It's a very odd thing, I know. But let's put the jumper caps in. So there's one or two. There's three. There's four. And here is five. And obviously I can't see as well as you guys can right now, so I gotta tilt it up here. Make sure that I'm capped correctly. So with the TMC 2208s, we have to match the coloring to the board. So here will be the first one. Here will be the second one. It'll be the third, and I have a fourth, and then I need a fifth, don't I? So let me scrounge around for a second here and see if I can find one. Otherwise, we're gonna be doing a different TMC. Let's see, TMC 2209s. 2209s. I think I have them in a box below. There we go. So I think that's the other one. I have to verify it because I have different types that look very similar. Yeah, that's a TMC 2208. Hopefully it's not a blown one. Sometimes I don't always pay attention, but I don't see any burn marks in here, so it looks good. So I'm gonna place that right here. So we have those all set. Next thing, we just need to look around the board and see if there's anything else that needs to be set that can't be set easily. And uh, we're gonna leave off the display probably for tonight, unless we have time. But uh, let's see what happens. I'm gonna have to place this in the container now. So here's the container. Obviously it's got some dust in it. We're gonna need a drive to put into it eventually. So what we'll do is we'll actually go over to Marlin in about two seconds. And we're gonna have to set up in VS Code our configuration. So let me get VS Code set up real quick here. I'll show you what I'm doing. Let me just get it so I can see the desktop with everything on it. There we go. So on the desktop, I have a current version of Marlin, but I've been not needing it because it's got mods in it. So I'm gonna open up a fresh one and you can actually download Marlin over here. It's Marlin FW.org. 
These are the G codes for operating it. But we're gonna go to downloads. Obviously I have this build already, but this is where you would download it. And then if you want configurations for like example files, you'd actually go into here and then click on code to download it. So it would be download zip. So as soon as that finishes downloading, I'll show you what that looks like, but we can actually peek in here you have example files. They mean examples. They don't mean configurations, just so you know. Creality. Then in here you have the Creality 3 or Ender 3. In this case, Ender 3 Pro or V2. So you would click over here. They have it for the SKR version 1.4. They don't have it currently posted for SKR version 2. But all you have to do is modify one thing, or two things, excuse me. You have to modify your motherboard, which is right here. And then you'll have to modify your platform io.ini, but I usually go through this. So let me uh, see if I can find it real quick here. Well you're gonna to have to modify that separately because they don't include it but it's really easy to do so we're gonna skip that for now we're gonna go over and we're going to extract which we've already done our Marlin 2.0 or at least I thought I did but we didn't so I'll right click and I'll say extract on the correct file and I'll extract all and this will take a second to extract and then we'll go from there so let me uh, separate out the chat here so I can see it uh, TMC 2208s are different from TMC 2209s in that they have sensorless homing or they have overcurrent. And what that does is it trips a wire that is wired into your board into the architecture of the actual board over here, which I'll show you. So essentially, on the board, you have your end stop functionality. And essentially what you're doing is you're tripping a single pin to go high or low for your end stop. So in this case, let me see if I can zoom in a little. It's gonna take a second. There's three sets of pins. And one of those, if you can set the current high, through the actual surface of this board, they've wired that pin for the TMC 2209s to trip and cause you to emulate an end stop by doing overcurrent. So it's kind of like a pressure valve release. So when there's too much pressure, it blows out. In this case, the flow is actually electrons instead of water. So we're not gonna do that presently because the way this actual printer is set up, there's end stops everywhere. And I wanna show you how to do it the right way first but I have done videos explaining how to do the TMC 2209s and how they're actually set up. So let's go back over to the desktop and inside the desktop, the TMC 2206s or 2226s are just like TMC 2209s. So on the desktop, we're gonna go over to open folder. We're gonna go to our downloads, Marlin 2.0, Marlin 2.0. And then we're gonna go into, hang on, I'm trying to get my screen so I can see everything here. There we go. We're gonna select folder. Inside select folder, it gets kind of weird so what we're going to do is we're going to go to the marlin folder then we're going to go to the source folder the core folder boards.h and we're going to search on skr underscore v2 hopefully 
as soon as it lets me get there. Let's do that again. Control F, SKR underscore V2. And you see there's two versions. You want the Rev B. So you're gonna right click, you're gonna copy it. You're also gonna note what the actual chipset is because it says STM32F407. Now they may be swapping chipsets soon. So it might say 429 instead of 407. At the moment, the way that I would do it is to set it up the same way I'm doing it now. And then if there is a change, they're gonna have to manipulate their INI file. But I'll show you that in a second. So if you do a search on configuration.h for motherboard, you can paste your configuration over the SKR, or excuse me, over the ramps. Then you'll change the serial port to negative one. And now that you got that set, you've got your communication set for the board via USB. I usually use the second one down here for the actual TFT display. And then there's a third one that's for something else, but we'll get into that another time. But for now, I'm gonna leave this disabled and then we can go back and think about it later. So next thing that we wanna do is set up the actual build, which is platformio.ini. And as you can see, there's a bunch of INIs in here that it's pointing to. So it's grabbing information from one of the INIs over here. And what that means is instead of making a continuously long file, they've broken it up into individual files right here. So that's why it's saying go to the INI file and grab that information. So we need the STM32F4. So we're gonna find that file, open it up, and we're gonna search on SKR underscore V2, which it won't find it, so it's two. We'll copy this. And as you can see down here, they have a bunch of other things. But one of the things they did was the 429 for the Octopus Pro. So it's probably going to be something similar to this in the future over here. But they haven't broken it out yet. That's probably going to come within the next days or weeks, depending upon how quickly Marlin gets on it. But now that we have the information we need, we'll go back over to the platform io.ini, highlight the Mega 2560, and paste our version. Now, what I like to do is check my build. So I'm gonna click on .pio, and as you can see, there's a Mega 2560 currently in here. This is what they usually build before they release. It's to test it, so they don't delete it. So it's inside your actual file that you open up for the firmware. So to clean that out, you'll click on the little garbage can, and as you can see, it's now gone. So now we'll click the checkbox and hopefully it'll build without breaking. On occasion, it will break. And what you can do is click the checkbox a second time in order to take care of that. So that's gonna build for a second. We'll know that the build is good at least. And then we'll worry about all the other connections inside the box in a moment. So it's gonna be a little bit difficult because I have to work at an angle where I can't see. So uh, just keep that understood while I'm doing this. So let me uh, move something over here. Okay. So as you can see, it built in 38 seconds. We actually have a file for the actual build down in here called firmware.bin. So we can't view it because it's a binary. Essentially, it's going to be ones and zeros, but it knows to point to that file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on it. I'm then going to go to reveal and file explorer. I'll bring up the screen for you to see in a second. There we go. And we have a drive in the boot right now. This is a past build that I was using. So what we'll do is we'll right click and we'll send it to the actual boot drive. So now that that's there, 
we'll go back and set things up on the actual printer. Hopefully the camera's still working. Okay, so I'm gonna pop out the drive. I'm then going to place this in here. And I'm gonna examine this to see what I'm on. I'm on USB currently, so I need to move this over to direct power. And the reason that I do that is because these won't function properly if you're not on the actual power from your power supply rather than USB. So now I'll take this and we're gonna have to map out where the fan goes because this is going to be slightly different. So it's probably gonna go over here. So we're gonna have to look at the pins on the board. But before we do that, I'm gonna plug this in See if I can slide this down into position. It might not work. So let's see what we got here. So I need to move this up a little. There we go. So let me try putting some screws in real quick here. Okay, that one's in, so now I gotta get another one. Try and match it up again. I don't know if that's screwing down. Nope. So let me bring this over here so I can see what I'm doing. Essentially the reason that I'm having issues is because I've never tried this before going on camera. But I wanted to show you that it is possible to do this. And it looks like all the holes match up. So I just put one down here so I could make sure it worked. Now I'll try and do it from above watching the camera. There we go. Okay, that's in position. Now I need one more. And then we're gonna go back and check the pinouts on this board. So we know where to connect the actual fan. Cause we're actually going to make this automatic. So it turns on. So it's gonna be one of these over here. These are your fan ports. So if we go over to the desktop for a second, and then we go over to the web browser. We're going to go over to the manual for a second for Big Tree Tech. And we're going to go back and we're going to look for the pins diagram. So there's a pin out right here. It's probably not going to be super, but you see fan two, one, and zero. The one you probably want to use is going to be fan one because this one might be reserved. So the camera just clicked off, so I'll put it back on. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find this pin number, which is located right here, which is PB6. So we're gonna go over to here, and what we need to do is understand where this pin is. So in order to do this, we have to go to the pins file. So to set this up, we're gonna to go to source, pins. Then we're gonna find our chipset type, which is STM32F4. Then we're gonna find our board in here, which is the SKR Reb B. Now this is gonna point us to another file, which it says include. So that means it's gonna be a common file right here. And then our pins that we're looking for over here is gonna be PB6. 
So if you search on PB6, you'll see that it's fan one. But we're gonna use that in a controlled fan for when we're doing stepping. So this is gonna take me a second to find because I'm doing this live rather than looking it up. So inside your configuration advanced.h, you're gonna search on controller fan, I think it is. And what we have here is the fan turns on automatically whenever any driver is enabled. And what they mean is stepper driver. Those are the TMC 2208s. So what we need to do is remove comments to set this up. So we're going to hit control and then slash to take off the comment. We're also going to do it up here so we can enable this section. And we're not going to do it only for Z. We're going to do it for all of them. So this will take a second to enable. Negative one currently means unallocated. And usually what happens is, is they have settings down here for your fan speed. I'm gonna set this to 200. And we're not gonna set a minimum. You may wanna set that close to 200 because the fan doesn't really turn over until it's over a certain amount. So now that we've got that, we need to then not worry about this. This will keep running until you actually say motor stop inside your software. So we're good there. Now we need to set this pin. So that was the PB6. So if we go back over to our default configuration up here for SKR2 common, we can just copy that. We'll minimize this. We'll go back over to the advanced config and we'll paste it over the negative one. And that's what we're gonna do to set the actual pin. So there are other things you can do in here. I'm not gonna talk about those. You can read about them on your own time. But now that we've got that set, we can test it by doing a build. So I'm just gonna click the checkbox and see if it fails. It may but we haven't changed our steppers yet, so there might be other issues. And I'll check on the chat while that's going on. Okay, so let me grab my chai for a second. The yellow that you're seeing right here is just a warning message, it's no big deal, and it completed fine. So let's go over to configuration.h, and let's search on a4988, this brings us to our default steppers. Now, because we're setting up the TMC2208, we're gonna copy this. Then we're gonna paste it over our steppers. And as soon as we're done with this, we need to enable one more stepper. So there's an E1. So I'm gonna do a control slash, and then I'm gonna paste this one in. All that does is removes the actual comment. So now that we've got that set, we're gonna try and build again because there might be something funky that occurs with the actual positioning of this. It might ask us to invert something. So let's click the checkbox. And this is very iterative. That's why I'm showing you all these steps. Is the SDL file for the case going to be posted after the stream has ended? Yeah. For TMC 2226s, they're the same as TMC 2209s essentially. So in here, you'd go up and you would look and you would see TMC 2209s. They don't have the 2206s or 2226s, so you'd use that. Now, it looks like I got a build error, 
So when this occurs, there's usually a red mark that occurs, but I don't see one. So we've got to figure out what's going on here. Because essentially it says failed. So what we can do is real quick, we can click the checkbox and try and build again and check for the failure. Because sometimes it just fails because something builds out of order. And that was the case apparently this time. So once we've got this set, we'll then possibly need to invert the directions for the actual movement of the actual steppers. And that means that it might go in the wrong direction initially for the X, Y, and Z axis. So we're gonna set everything pretty much to center and then move it slightly and see what happens. But I'll show you that now. Hopefully I can start putting this together. This is gonna be a kind of mess for me to do by hand with this camera. So let me bring you over to that and I'll show you what we're gonna do. So on the workbench, I have to slide this down underneath. So let me move some stuff around. So essentially, we already know about the fan. So we're gonna plug that in right here with the notch connector. And that'll activate the fan when these steppers are actually in motion. So let me just get this over on this side. Hopefully it will, won't melt because it's being cooled. And there's going to be a bunch of stuff to actually configure that's going to be hard to see. So let me see if I can find a way to make this easier. Don't know how well that's going to look. But essentially what we need to do is connect the power. So we have to figure out what our cables are. So there's a bunch of cables underneath here and it's gonna be slightly confusing, but the good thing was I disconnected the actual power supply cable. So I know which one it is. And then the other cable that we're gonna to have to worry about is the actual heat bed. And then we can identify everything else because apparently I changed the actual heater cartridge. So it's going to be white, but there's going to be other wires in here that are going to be confusing. And I have them bundled together because there's two actual fans. So originally when I did the fans, I did them to use the other power supply for the actual fan. So I had to put ferrule connectors on these and I'm trying to get this so you can see it. These protect against an accidental frayed wire between them so that they don't touch and they're crimped on. This is a safety feature that I highly recommend using and I'll show you what that hopefully looks like. Well, I put it in my toolbox, but it's not in the room right now. But essentially it's a crimper that is like hexagonal in shape and when you squeeze it will crimp these on and leave a little um let me see if you can see it here well that's horrible so let's try it up here so you can see the crimp marks on it right here and then the other one i have for the fan that's the cooling fan so we're gonna do that one first, but I'm gonna have to slide this in. So this is gonna be kind of wild to watch. So essentially I have to get all these wires out of the way. And so you might see me struggle for a minute while I try and get them in a position where I can work with them. So I'm probably gonna weight them down. And so down here, there's a power supply wire that you can barely see. Let me see if I can turn it so you can see it. These two go into the power for the board. 
So what I like to do is check the power for the board. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to have to go back over to the diagram to figure out what that is. So we'll go back over to the desktop. Now on the desktop, we'll go over to the web page. And on the web page, what we're going to be looking for is fan zero, hopefully, if that works. If it doesn't, we'll take it to fan two. But essentially what that is, is when you turn on the actual um, hot end, this will cool the surface. So hopefully that's allocated correctly. Otherwise, we'll have to move to here. And then the other fan we're going to put on HE1 because that's our hot end we're not using at the moment. We're only using one for our two extruders. So to do that, let's go back over and try this. So before we do that, let's see where the DC power goes in, which is over here. So ground and voltage, either 12 or 24 volts. So let's go back over to the desktop and we'll start with the power. It's currently disconnected and I don't know how well you can see it with my fingers over it, but there's a red and there's a black. And then on the board over here, let me get this so it can slide in. There is a red on top and a black. Obviously you can't see it very well, but I know that this is gonna be the actual voltage over here. Let me just verify, cause I might be wrong on this. So voltage is right here. So let me point to it. You can't see the red mark from a distance. But you could probably see it on the other camera that's not focusing very well. So to do this, we're going to have to loosen these up a little. And it may not fit initially because I've never tried it on this board. But let's give it a try. This is going to be a struggle because I'm doing this where I can't see everything I'm doing from above. But I'm going to have to move it in to do this. So I'm going to tighten that down as soon as I can get to the actual bolt. I just got to grab the right screwdriver. And this is actually not for the power. I'm sorry, this is for the bed. I forgot I took the power out, which is this one. So I'm going to take this out completely and show you if it fits. So I'm sliding it in like so. And then I'm going to tighten this down. So I'm going to push this in as best I can. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. So essentially I'm pushing that in and I'm just going to tighten it to the board. Then I'll do the other side. And I'm going to hold my finger on it or hold it in place and tighten it down. It's kind of hard to do from this angle as you can see. So that's in place. Then we have to do the heat bed and we have to verify that it's just the heat bed not a power in type situation. So this one's going to be fun because I've got to work with very little space. So we might do it last, depending upon how long the cord is. Whoop, I can pull the cord a little. There we go. So on this one, voltage is going to be right here. I don't know if you can see everything I'm doing. So here's the red wire. I may have to unscrew this if I haven't loosened it, which I haven't. And they're ferruled as well by 
me making a change to them previously. So going to slide that one in as well. Then I'm going to tighten it down as soon as I can find the actual screwdriver. Sorry, my hand's covering it. Okay, that's in position. Now let's do the last one. When you do this at home, you can actually see from above and from the sides. It's only when you're doing this under a camera it gets uh, interesting. This is why most people pre-record their videos. Okay, so those are now done. I want to see if I can make this angle better, but... It's kind of hard to do with this camera. So you're not actually seeing the full angle. Okay. So we're good there. Now we got to figure out what the extruders are. So I told you what the extruder wire was. In this case, it's going to be the white wire. So we're going to pull this out and we're going to figure out this mess. Okay. So as you can see, Managing wires while doing this is good times. So in this case, they allow you to pull these out now. So we're gonna actually wire this up above. So polarity for extruders doesn't matter. So red or black can be either. That's why the wires are both white. So I'm going to have to unscrew this to actually loosen it so to loosen it we're gonna go like so and if the camera blinks out I will restart it right away because it's getting close to that time so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place this in here hold it with my finger and then tighten it down then I'll do the same for this one hold it down with my finger and tighten that down. So we're good there. Now we're also gonna do the other fan. This is the fan that's gonna actually automatically go on when the temperature reaches a certain amount. So there's one fan wire. And the reason I know this is because I've traced it out right here. But there's a way you can test it with a nine volt battery as well. Granted, I don't have one on me, I just know what they are. So, to do this, we're going to grab this one. Now this one is polarity driven, so I marked red and black. So I'm gonna have to loosen these. And loosen this. And first I'll do red, which will go right here. I'll then tighten it down. Then I'll do black. And I'll tighten this down. And we're good there. So we're gonna put these two off to the side for a second. And we have to trace out what's going on with the actual fan wire, which we're gonna do for, I'm guessing, we'll try this one first. If it doesn't work for automatic fan, we'll do something different. So we've got those sorted out for both these wires. Let me just get them in a place where they're not gonna move around on me. This is why airplane weights are so helpful. 
So there are other wires that we've got to connect, and those are our actual stepper wires. Now they're notched already, so it should be pretty simple. So the Y is the second stepper. So I'm gonna slide that in here, and I'm probably gonna to have to push it down with this just to make sure it's in place. Now I'm gonna lift this up and let all the wires fly. So over here, we've got other wires. So they're marked E, and this one's marked X. So we'll go with X next. And this one's gonna be good times because I can't apply a lot of pressure to it from this angle. So there we go. So now we've got the extruder and I'm looking for the Z stepper. So the Z stepper I originally pushed off to the side right here. I'm going to have to thread this through underneath the printer. So that might take a second to do. I might have to tip the printer over so I can do this. But it also has the X end stop on it. So let's see if we can do this without making too much of a mess. So essentially, I need to feed something through the bottom. So that's one wire. That's actually the second extruder. And then this is the wiring that I have to pop up through here. And the same is true for this one. There's a little notch underneath the printer, that's why I have to do this. So some of the wires might be somewhat long. And this one I actually uh, have to look at for a second. So it's the E and the X. This is gonna go on the other side, so I have to feed it back through. But what I'm looking for is the extruder which is gonna be right here. So I'm gonna push that down and then I'll look for the Z in a second. So we're missing a wire I'm trying to find. Hopefully I didn't plug it in by accident because on this end it's marked X, so we're good there. So let me look around and see where it went. It might be that I just left it in the back and I can't see it. Or it's in the other room. Let me go check the other room real quick. Apparently it's not in the other room, so it's someplace around here and I may have just dropped it. But we gotta find that wire in order to do the Z axis, or we can do that some other time. Let's see what we got here. So we got the power cord. Good times. Sorry, I have to examine everything real quick. So, EX, there should be a wire. Is it attached? No. So I placed that someplace, here it is. So here's the wire. 
I took it off originally when I was taking this apart and put it over on my other bench. So let me get this down into place. And try and move this over so you can see what I'm doing again. So essentially I gotta clean up some of this wiring real quick. So what we have here is the X minimum. We need to make sure that this is plugged into signal and ground. We don't want to fry our board by accident. It's always a good default place to start. So it's this wire over here. So let's go over to the uh, desktop for a second. On the desktop, we need to find our X, Y, and Z minimum end stops. And as you can see, this is the Z minimum that we're looking for over in here. Then we have our X. So let's go over and look at that. So it's five volts ground, and then it's the signal pin being PC1. So if we go back over to the workbench, we're gonna find PC1, which is going to be, it's hard to see, down in here. So PC1, we're going to have to slide in here. Now there's something I didn't tell you because I've done it in other videos, but you need, might need to clip off the actual little piece here to fit it in because they put a locking piece in there. Mine's already clipped, so I'm just gonna slide it in. So that's now on the actual signal and ground. Let me make sure the board's facing the right direction. Yep. So let's do the Z axis as well, or Y axis. And that is another interesting wire. I can't remember what it's for, but let's trace it out. This might actually be a fan. So let's get all this out of the way. Actually, it's a thermistor. So this is a thermistor wire right here, this white one. That's for the extruder. That's why I bundled them together. But I'm going to put these in place real quick so you can see. Essentially, it's kind of messy to see. But I'm going to slide this in and hopefully do it correctly polarity-wise because it only can fit one way. So there's that one. Now let me do the other one, which is the fan, I think. Just gotta find the connector. Here it is. And that's connected. So now we gotta find the thermistor, which goes with the extruder, which is right here. So that's gonna be H E zero. So HE0, if we go over to the desktop for a second, we're gonna look over here and you see TB, which is thermal bed. Then you have TH0, which is hot end zero. That's the one we're looking for. So it's ground and it's signal. But in this case, the direction of your wiring doesn't matter because the wires are both white. It's basically an analog circuit to figure out what the temperature is. So hang on, let me turn the camera back on. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug this in and it's notched. So I gotta look and double check cause there's an extra one in here. So it's this one right here, second from the end, and we're good there. Next we're gonna do the bed which is actually, I think this wire, I could be wrong, but we can also trace it out. But it appears to be bundled with the wiring for the bed. So hopefully I'm correct. I did extend this wire a long time ago. So in this case, the polarity of this one doesn't matter. So it's gonna go right down in here 
Now these connections sometimes can be faulty, so you might want to change the connector to something that clicks in. That is up to you. So we're connected there. Now I know I'm missing a couple more connections. So as you can see, this one says the X minimum. This one was actually Y, so I put it in the wrong place. So I'm going to move the end stop sensor over one, remembering that it's ground and signal only. That way if you screw up, you don't cook your board. And then I'm going to do the same for the X. So we've got X and Y in place. So what we're missing right now is the actual connection that we're going to use for our stepper. And this is the Z axis. So I have to slide this in the first connection. Now if it doesn't work correctly, you can put jumpers on the first two and last two pins, but we're not going to try that right now. I have to route this over. So this is actually going to plug into the stepper motor, which I have to feel around. So it's going to go underneath. So we're almost there. We also have a second extruder. Hang on. So we have a bunch of wires here. These go to the extruder and the x-axis. So these got to be threaded back through underneath. This is why you don't see live videos on this. This is why you never do live with animals. In this case, it's just a printer, but it's essentially the same thing. Okay, and for those that don't know, I actually bought a shielding for these wires. It actually, you just push it in and then you slide these through. So this is the additional stepper. This is possibly going to have issues, meaning the wrong direction, in which case you can turn it 180 degrees and insert it to reverse the direction or do it in software. So I'm going to slide this in. It's a DuPont connector. And so that's now in place. We're going to have to feed the power supply connector back underneath. There's a little cutout inside the bottom over here for wiring. Obviously, I didn't put channels in there for everything. I probably should have. But I'm going to slide this underneath too for the X or Z stepper. So we're set there. Let me get this down so that we can see what we're doing. This I'm going to have to slide further through. So essentially, we're pretty close to being set up. What I need to do now is actually figure out how to manage my wires better. And zip ties are usually helpful, but I'm going to see if I can tuck them underneath. I know this looks horrible. But managing your wires is a safety issue, and this is not safe, what I'm doing right now. But once this starts moving, it might get in the way of it. Normally I would shorten them, but because I'm working in this tight space with a video, I need them long enough so I can work. So hopefully that'll keep them down. Now let's try and slide this into place. So that's the first one. Probably going to have to pull the wires through underneath. go. 
So those are in position. Now I normally have a lid that goes over this that I might just go get and put in just because it will keep things nice and controlled. But let's see if we can get away with it for now. I'm going to have to tighten this into place. Okay, now that won't slide around too much. Right now there's clearance. So we're good there. Let me check on the chat because I know I've been away for a while. Let's see what we got here. So for the TMC 20, yes, I define them as TMC 2209s. Is there any, or excuse me, is there always on power on the SKR2, similar to the Creality Metsi. I am unsure of the Creality Metsi. Um, I'm not sure of that architecture. But if you're looking for a PS on, there is a setting. It's actually the jumper, or excuse me, it's right next to the thermistors. Right now I'm not covering it because the power supply is controlled by a switch over here. I'm just trying to show you a basic setup. Obviously, there's more complexity that I could show you. I'm actually showing you another extruder during this. But I'm going to have to actually be able to reach in here and pull this drive out. So this is going to be fun because normally I would load through here. But due to this board being different, you can't do it the normal way. So now that we've got that set, we're gonna have to set up some other things real quick and I'm gonna have to check to see why this is floating in midair and not damage my camera while doing it. So there's a wire out of place that I can feel. Okay, so that's flat. Now let's see if I can reach around and pull through the other wire. So there's a wire that goes into a couple of things. So essentially, I took this apart before the video so I could do stuff. So this is the X. So I might have to turn this to look and you might not see what I'm doing. I'm looking for the actual connection underneath. Then I have to do the same for the extruder, which is gonna be over here. And now I remember why I didn't hook up the second motor, because you can't see it with the camera, because it falls at that height. So those are set. Now there's an end stop over here, so I gotta trace it out, and I'm probably gonna have to look again. So that's going to plug in inside here someplace. So I got to turn it so I can see. Sorry, I'm going to have to really turn it. There it is. So I'll show you what I'm looking for. It's right up in here. So. Now that we got that set, there's probably another one that we need to look for. That's our power supply. Now it's currently de-energized. There's no power in the system, but you just match up these colors and then plug it in. So now I'm just trying to find one other wire and that's for the z-axis and obviously I'm doing an awesome job of finding it but I'm gonna pull this one out for now give me a second to clip this off where are my blue pliers This would be the second extruder I'm taking it off for now, just because it's uh, kind of useless in, without me being able to make some changes. OK, 
Okay. So there's going to be some issues that I'm going to have to sort out, and that's the wiring. There's another cable down here that I'm feeling around for, which I push through, and it won't go through that way. So we're going to use it this way. So it's notched as well. I'm not sure where I'm pointing to. I might have to take this out. Oh, I got it in. Okay, so we're still missing the on stop connector. That one I have someplace around my desk. Here it is. So let me see if I can see what's going on. So here's another cable for the end stop hopefully it's set up the same way otherwise i'm going to have to take it apart to look but it's for the zx access so you can figure out what the actual polarity is by looking here and here and then you can see that it says voltage and signal i avoid doing that only because it's dangerous initially it's probably correct but who knows I don't like doing voltage and signal together so I'm assuming it means ground and they just wired it funny but worst comes to worst we can try it but obviously there's a ground in between so I'm assuming that it's gonna go into voltage and ground so we're all set there. We're gonna move each one of these axi to a center place. Obviously the second extruder is disconnected for the moment, but the wiring for the actual fans is done. So we're gonna power this up in a second and hopefully not have a mess. So this is also gonna flash the firmware. So let me find the connection for this. And this is known as a smoke test, so if you've done something wrong, you'll see smoke. You'll know it right away. So let's see what happens. So I don't see any smoke. It looks like it's flashing. The board is powered. So what we're going to do now is plug in a USB. So i got to grab a cable for this. It's going to take me a second to find one. Let's see, here we go. So I'm gonna plug in this side over here. You probably can't see what I'm doing, but I'm plugging in the USB cable. Now I'm gonna plug this into the computer. Sounds like we have connectivity, so let's go over to the desktop for a second. So on the desktop, I got to bring up Pronerface. This is going to take a second because I don't have it open right away. So I'm going to go over to my desktop, Pronerface, open that up. Right now, we don't know what the COM port is because it says COM port 1, but it's probably either 4 or 10. So to check it, we'll go over to Device Manager which you might not see me bringing up, but you just type device manager in the start menu or run menu and it should populate. So now that we have that, we'll go to com ports and it's com port four. So what we'll do is change this to four and try connecting. It says connecting printer is now online. So now the fun begins. This is gonna get messy real quick. So I'm gonna see if I can show you printer phase and the printer at the same time. So we're looking from above. I'm gonna center all the axi. And if you have a problem, turn off the power that's down here when doing this. So everything's centered. We're gonna try first to move the x-axis, which is this one right here. 
So it's in the center of the axis right now. So I'm going to move it 10 just to see where it goes. Okay, so now it's moving. We know it's moving a lot. So there's going to be some issues that we're going to have to deal with. Let's try moving it back the other direction. So we know that's good for now. Let's go to the Y axis. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to move it 10. Then we're going to move it back 10. Now the direction of the end stops, just so you know, X axis is going to be this way. Y axis end stop is going to be this way. And then Z is going to be down. So let's try moving the Z axis up. Let's try 10. So it's going up. Let's try going down 10. It's still going up. So let's try that again. Okay, so when I click up, it actually goes down. Unless there was a delay between the two, which we're seeing. So it's actually going up and then down. So let's try down again. So it's going down. So now comes the fun part. Because your end stops may or may not function correctly, we're going to have to test them before doing anything. So the best way to test them is to go over here and type M119 and press enter. And currently they all say open. So I'm going to click on the X or excuse me, Z end stop with my finger and hold it down. Obviously it's underneath here. So let's see if I can show you. So let me show you what I'm doing here. Okay, this is gonna be a weird angle, but here's the end stop right here. And I'm just pushing down on it and holding it down. So let's go back over to Proner Face so you can see what I'm actually doing. So I'm gonna hold this down. I'm gonna go over to Proner Face and do an M119 again. And it says triggered, so we know that's working correctly. Next, we're going to find the end stop for the X axis, which is right here. Hold that down, do the command again, and that triggered. And the last one is hidden in the back. And I got to turn off the motors so I can move the bed so you can see it. So motors off, pull this over. And the last one is down in here. So I'm going to hold that down and I'm going to do this again. So all the end stops are correct. So they work. Now comes the really bad part. Move everything to the center of their axis. And if it goes the wrong direction from where these things are located, turn off the printer. So I'm going to put my hand on the power for the switch. And I'm going to home the X axis. It went the wrong way. So we know that's needs to be inverted for direction. Let's try the Y axis now. So I'm going to power this back up. I'm going to then reconnect. So disconnect, reconnect. And I'm going to do the same thing. Put my hand on the power and then I'm going to home the Y axis. This might happen super quick. So you might hear a grinding noise if it goes the wrong direction. So let's click it. That one's correct. So we're good there. So last one is Z. So if it goes the wrong direction and goes up, turn off the printer. So we'll click over here on Home Z. And if you want to see the commands as they're being processed in printer face, you can go over to Settings, Debug Communications. This will give you a flood of communications down here but I'll show you what the actual G codes are. It's like uh, M28 and then it's gonna specify an access. So we'll click this and it appears to be going the right direction. So we'll click it with our finger and then click it again because you have to click twice. Normally it would reach down and hit it, but I'm nervous initially that the actual bed is not matched up right meaning that the actual leveling is changed. So we know that there's an issue with the X axis going the wrong way. So we can't flip the connector in this case. So we'll do motors off. 
we'll move this forward then we'll go back into Marlin so I have to go over to my desktop and I have to bring up Marlin and I'm gonna shut the printer down while that's going on and I'll show you Marlin so I've turned off the printer and the reason I did that is so I can pop out the USB so in here we're going to configuration.h and what we need to search on is inverting so there's several types of inverting I'm just trying to get some tools out of the way so I can actually work here okay so <clears throat> what you're gonna have to look for these are your actual steps per millimeter these we're gonna address later this is a calibration thing but they're pretty accurate from where we're starting. So let's search on invert, which is a control F, invert. And down here, you can see things like inverting stepper pins, active low. Then you have something here that says disable access steps immediately when trying. That's probably not it. So then you have direction. So what you see here is invert direction. So it's probably this one right here. So we'll change the false to a true. If I can spell. Then we'll do a rebuild. And while that's rebuilding, I'll go over to the actual printer for a second. And I'll pop out the drive, which is gonna be buried in here. So this might get fun real quick. So here's the drive. I'm gonna put it into the converter, which is right here, and place this in the computer. Okay, it looks like we're good there. So what we're gonna do is pop out the drive after we actually put the firmware on it, sorry. I'll wake up in a minute. So what we're gonna have to do is go back over to the desktop. We're gonna have to go find the actual configuration. So in here, we're gonna go to .pio, build, the SKR folder, we're going to find the firmware.bin, we're going to right click, and then we're going to reveal in File Explorer. Then we'll check on the drive. That was the last build we did at 628. So we're going to put the firmware on there, and this one will rewrite the name if it loads correctly. So you should have two on your D drive. This one should be the new time if it turns to firmware.curve. So let's go back over to the workbench and hopefully the camera won't blink out while I'm doing this. Pop out the drive. And then in this case, I've got to work this in. Unfortunately, this was designed for a different type of board. So, bear with me while I make a mess of things. Let me see if I can do this a different way. I got some needle nose pliers that I can use. This is not advisable. Okay, push that in. We're gonna power it back up. Move the printer forward a little so you can see what's going on, or back a little. So this is the axis we care about right here, and which way it travels. So we're gonna initially just move it and see if it works correctly. So we'll go back over to the desktop in Pronterface. 
inside printer face will reconnect it says printer is now online we'll double check our end steps they're all open so let's try moving 10 it's going one way and there's a buzzing noise so I'm gonna power everything down and I'm gonna try and figure out what that noise is I think it's a fan but it could also be danger so I don't see anything that could cause an issue except for maybe that so let's try this again okay there's no buzzing noise at the moment so let's try homing after we reconnect so disconnect reconnect and we're gonna home with our hand on the power switch So that seems fine. So there is a buzzing noise that's of concern. And where it's coming from is a little bit concerning but I'm not seeing any smoke so let me power down the system for a second and we're gonna have to do a process of elimination as to what this is so I'm checking all the connections to make sure they're actually locked in place or as best as they can be but it's a resonating noise it sounds like a fan so that makes me believe that it's either the fan over on the bottom down here or it's a fan on here that's causing the issue it might be that it's loose so let's power it up and see if it comes back So I think it happened when I moved in access for homing. So let's try that. I got to disconnect and reconnect, don't I? So what I'm experimenting with is disconnecting the wire to the stepper. It's not the issue. So the resonating noise is coming from probably one of the steppers. It's interesting. At the moment it's not a big issue. Although, let's check these. Okay, that's good. Let's move that forward. I'm ignoring it for now, but it's not a good thing to have an unexplained noise. But there's no smoke rising at the moment, so let's see what happens. I'm also gonna keep an eye on this if it doesn't click then we'll have to click it manually. Because the bed might be in a different position. So it is driving into the bed, but it's not driving in too far. So we're gonna back that off. And then I'm going to have to figure out what this noise is. So one of the ways I can do this is disconnect different things and see what causes it or doesn't cause it. 
So I'm going to power down the system. And I'm going to start with the Z axis, which is over here, and pull the plug. And so now the actual stepper is disabled for Z. Then I'm going to power it back up. And I'm going to disconnect, reconnect. And then I'm going to move the X axis and see if it recreates. Okay, so it's not the Z axis. So let's see if we can figure out what it is. So I'm going to power the system down. And we're going to have to consider what's going on here. That humming is probably coming from one of the steppers. So I'm going to disconnect the actual extruder stepper. That'll eliminate another possibility. And then we'll try this again. So let's disconnect, reconnect. This is not a normal thing to check, but this is concerning to me. So I'm going to move the X axis again to home. So that's when we get the buzz. So I'm going to move this back out, power it down. I'm going to disconnect the X stepper as soon as I find it. right here so let's power it back up move this to the center disconnect reconnect and let's try moving the y-axis so there's the buzz again so my guess is that there's something going on with the board the question is, what's the noise? So everything's powered down. I'm going to remove the power for a second. And I'm going to feel around and see if there's any heat. Now what I think it is, is the vibration of the fan is actually causing this, but I'm not sure. But obviously I don't have this wired the best way because the fan is not designed for this particular configuration, but there are fan pins down here that I could move to. And also when we move, the fan goes on. So let's disconnect the fan for a second. Bring this over here. And let's try this one last time. Let me just connect the power. This might explain the noise. So it's powered up. Disconnect, reconnect. Now let's try moving the Y axis a little and seeing what's going on if it has an issue. So there's no noise. So this might just be the sound of the fan not being balanced. So let's power down the system and check again. So I'm going to move this over and I'm going to reconnect the fan as soon as I get these out of the way. So we're just going to slide this back into place and see if that's the noise. And we'll put these back in place. So that's the extruder. Okay, that's back in place. We got to reconnect the motors. Sorry, I'm doing this blind, so. OK, 
Okay, that's back in place. So there's another one I disconnected where I might have to turn the printer if I can't feel for it. This one I'm gonna have to turn. Okay, so I've connected back up all the steppers, I believe. Let's check this again. So power it up. Let's connect and let's try homing the x-axis. Now the motor will go on down here. So let's see if that's it. Yeah, so it's the sound of the fan that's causing that noise. Now you can get better fans that don't do that. But at present, I think I'm running a 12 volt fan on a 24 volt uh, configuration. So that might be the issue, but you can do motors off. And after 60 seconds, it probably will stop the fan. So we'll give that 60 seconds and I'll check the chat to see what's going on because I've been babbling for a long time. Hey, Sir Ken. Sorry, uh, it's been a while. I've been uh, talking about how to set things up. Also, I have a BL Touch. Uh, the BL Touch, I might not cover tonight because we're just trying to get the system up and running. But uh, we've been going at this for, what, an hour and 40 minutes? So let's see what happens with the fan. And then tomorrow, I think, or later in the week, I'll talk about everything else. But let's try setting up the hot end for tonight. And then we'll call it a night because uh, this can only take a couple minutes. The fan went off just now and the noise stopped. So it's the sound of the fan that's causing that. So let's go over to Proner face or excuse me, over to the actual desktop on the computer and go over to, hang on a second, VS code. And we have an automatic fan that we need to set up for the second extruder. So on the advanced, we're gonna look for a hot end, I think. So control F, hot end. And what we're looking for is how to turn the fan on. So it might have to be that we search, let's see what we got here, dual hot, Dual carriage, dual carriage. You might have to search on fan. Or they moved it. Let's see. I'm looking for something similar to the actual setting that we set for the stepper fan. It's controller fan and I think it's something else. But let's search on fan because I can't remember what it is. And fan is probably the worst thing to search on. So let's go to the top of the file and try and do it. So let's see, temp sensor chamber fan, we don't have one. Let's see, laser cooler, we don't have one. Adaptive fan slowing, we don't wanna worry about that. Let's see, experimental, don't wanna do that. We're not going to do PID, that's tuning. So let's see, controller fan. 
So let's see, cool down to stepper, that's what we just did. They may have moved the setting. Let's see, part cooling. Extruder cooling fans, here we go. So here's what we're looking for. So I'm gonna turn off the printer for a moment. It's on hot end two. So to do this one, what we need to do is we have to find out what that pin is. So we're gonna go back over to source, pins, find our chipset, which is STM32F4. Then in here, we're gonna find the main board because we know that if we go here, it refers us to common. So we'll click on common. And we're looking for the hot end two, which is going to be someplace in here. So it's probably going to be PB4, but we can confirm that by going over here and it says PB4. So we're going to use that one. So I'm going to highlight this and copy it and hopefully they haven't restricted it. So we'll go back over here. We'll set it for here and paste it. And then the temperature at which it goes on and the speed, I'm gonna change the speed to 200. And I'm going to change the temperature because we're not gonna go all the way up. It'll go on at 50 degrees Celsius. And obviously you're not gonna see this very well without me putting a camera in place. So let me see if I can do that so you get a good angle. Okay, so I've got it set on the fan. So I'm gonna build this real quick. Hopefully it will build without issue. And then we can test the hot end. Now there might be failures that occur and we can troubleshoot those as well. But let me show you what's going on. We just wanna turn on the temperature in a moment. I'm gonna show you what it looks like so we're focused on the fan that's right here and it activating when this reaches a certain temperature but before we do that we've got to load the build so i got to move that out of the way so let's go back over to the desktop for a second we're going to go back up here we're going to click on the dot pio folder Big Tree Tech, we're gonna right click on firmware.bin and we're gonna say reveal and file explorer. Then we're gonna go back over to the desktop for a second for the workbench. I'm gonna move this out of the way for a second. And I'm gonna pop the drive out and lift it out and place this in the actual drive hopefully correctly, and then place it back on the computer. And next what we'll do is we'll go back over to the desktop on the computer, check on the drive, then we'll go back and we'll right click on firmware.bin, send it over to the drive, double check that it gets there, then we'll go back over to the workbench, and we'll insert this in a second. So I'm gonna pop this out. Gotta get the needle nose out again or the medical pliers. And slide this out of the way. And I dropped it, that's awesome. Okay, give me a second to get this out in a clever way. OK, 
Okay. If you're wondering where all these tools came from, it's uh, from building model airplanes as a kid. Let's try again. As I drop tools, that in, plug this in, that so you can see it. I'm going to power up the system. So essentially all I'm going to do is power up to 60 degrees Celsius because I don't want it to get too hot and unfortunately I don't have this integrated in so you can see what happens so let me see if i can integrate in the second camera so you can see it in the other one so give me a second to add it so let's see video capture device Second one, add from existing. Okay, so I'm gonna put that in the center of the screen so you can see. And transition over. Okay, so we're gonna have to do the disconnect reconnect again. So connect, it says online. Current temperature for this is actually showing up down here. So, if we were to touch this with our hand, we could heat it up. And you'll see the temperature actually change over here. See how it's going up with my finger on it? That's how you can test to see if it's working. But you can do that without power, just five volts for your board. But now we're actually gonna turn on the temperature. So I'm gonna change this temperature to 50 degrees Celsius. And I'm going to click set and over here you'll see it click up but we'll do 60 because that's when the fan goes on so let's click set and you can see the temperature value is set right here now we'll watch the fan and see if it actually occurs so this is actually heating up if it does fail it's usually related to the thermistor if it doesn't heat and that means that it's probably not connected to the board, but it just went on and we're at 54 degrees Celsius. So we know it works. So we've been able to prove out that we can turn a fan on automatically for our hot end and for the cooling of our board for our steppers. And tomorrow, or maybe on Friday, I'll cover more information. But this is a good stopping point because we're almost two hours in. For those that have been doing the Super Chats while I haven't been paying attention, thank you very much. Anybody that's doing PayPal or Patreon, I'm also grateful. And for those that don't know, on Patreon, there are other videos that no one's seen other than patrons. And I'll be adding more in a couple of days. I've actually got two in the hopper that I haven't put up there yet. And so at this point, I guess I want to say thank you for taking the time to watch. And uh, we'll catch up later in the week. I'll probably post when I'm doing this on Discord, which uh, you should see in the chat. And I'll also eventually post the actual um 3d printed stl in the actual video 
So at this time, thanks a lot for taking the time to watch. And uh, unfortunately, I won't close caption my live streams because apparently I talk way too much. But you can always ask me questions in a foreign language and I'll try and answer them back. And it doesn't matter what language, just forgive my uh, grammar and the other language. And uh, everyone take care, be safe, and we'll catch up uh, on continuing this a little bit later.